Hi, everyone. This is Too Young to Be Old podcast with me, your host, Diane Gilman. Each week, my guests and I will share insights, advice, and more than a few laughs to empower and inspire women over the age of 50 who really need to embrace the aging process. We want to encourage you to pursue your passions and dreams no matter what decade you're living in. Too Young to Be Old podcast is intended to educate, empower, and foster connection with our community. Please note that this podcast is not a substitute for medical advice or care. So with that said, let's settle in, get comfortable, and let's get started. Hi, everyone. Um, this is the Queen of Jeans from HSN QVC, and my episode of the podcast, Too Young to Be Old. This week is so enticing. We've got the brilliant, extended living advocate and expert, Joy Laverde. Some of today's episode, I'm going to tell you, though, is going to shock you. Some of it is going to comfort you, but I guarantee you, all of it is going to surprise you. So let's get started with, who will take care of me when I get old and how? Joy, this is on my mind all yeah. the time. This morning, you know, I have a bad knee and I'm in physical therapy for it and I'm getting gel shots for it, but you know, I'm about to turn 78. And I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to do? I live in a two-story home I love. Oh, I'll call up my friend who's an engineer and see if he can build an elevator. (laughs) I don't think that's going to happen. Why not, right? (laughs) I, I want to talk to you a little bit about a headline yesterday in uh, the Washington Post, which was, we are officially a gray nation, which means average age of citizenry over 40, right over 40, and the majority over 55 to 60. And we're all at different levels of life savings, or like me, just go on working until you drop, right? But I love it. So here are my questions to you. I see all these options now. One of them is stay in place, stay in your place, but who, what? Someone comes in like once a week to take care of you, doesn't seem enough. For New York City, there's a new free app called New York Share, and you can, it's sort of like the Craigslist of baby boomers. You can get a stranger as a roommate, I always think of that movie, single white female terrifies me. And then there's also an app where if you are a family member and you cannot afford to hire care, this app gives you remote advice. It, whether you're dealing with Alzheimer's or someone recently out of a hospital, but the thing that interests me the most of all naturally is luxury customized senior living. For audience, are you ready for this? Please be sitting down because you're going to fall over. If you have memory loss, which is a very good word for Alzheimer's, for 30000 bucks a month, you can forget in ultimate luxury. So let's start with stay in place. And how do you do that? Well, you, it has a shelf life because it is good to a point. Keep in mind that what happens if forgetfulness sets in? I'm not talking about Alzheimer's. I'm talking about the quality of the decisions we make ah. when we're talking to the cat. Okay? Wow. Huh? I mean, do you know <laughs> Have you been in my apartment? Have you been listening? <laughs> I read the best article about the vocabulary of cats versus dogs. And cats have a bigger 
vocabulary because more cat owners talk to their cats than people talk to their dogs. Now, that says a lot. If forgetfulness is a, is a potential problem, aging in place has a shelf life. It's good until it's not. What are you going to oh forget? You're going to forget to turn on the stove or turn off the stove. Are you going to forget to yeah. go to a doctor appointment? Who, who, whoever thought that just putting a grab bar in your bathroom is enough to age in place? Well, it's not. That's so interesting because the other day I couldn't understand why my cats were being so friendly to me for an extended <laughs> period of time. And then I realized, oh, my God, I forgot to give them dinner. So, um, yeah, so I can see where my memory every once in a while is I just get too focused on something else. That's what I tell myself and slipping slightly. So, you know, the one thing that really scares me the most, I'm going to be honest and use the scare word, um, mm -hmm. is you're trying to age in place and you sign up with somebody or it's Medicare and Medicaid and and you think and you see it on TV with these advertisements like these super friendly people come to take care of you and they're super happy and they're doing your hair and they're and they're helping you get dressed and everything's so wonderful and you're really tight friends and then they quit a day yeah. later because the real truth is in this industry there is very little loyalty or longevity to employment within a company. Okay, so you bring up a real good point. So if you plan to age in place, you become an employer. Does that make sense? You're now, yeah. the, you're now the CEO of yeah. your house. Oh, Congratulations. <laughs> right? Yeah. You, you hire, you fire, and you manage the care if you're living alone. Doesn't, does, doesn't make sense. It, it is, makes it, no sense No to sense me. whatsoever. But if you are on a limited budget, you're going to have to, God forbid, right. depend on Medicare or Medicaid or both. And the quality of the care and the rapidity mm -hmm. which with it turns over, you never get that. Like, I need an emotional connection. That's just who I am, and that's how I chose my cancer care. It was a much smaller clinic within a huge hospital, but it was very personalized. Everybody knew you by first name. You knew all the nurses by first name. I would not do well with strangers yeah. constantly having to reintroduce themselves to my house. The idea of going on an app and getting a stranger as a roommate, I always think of that movie, Single White Female. You'd like to have some yeah. serial yeah. killer maniac. I have, a, I have a story. A sister, my sister-in-law had a roommate, and the minute my sister-in-law got sick, the roommate moved out. Huh? Just because she said, this isn't what I signed up for. Well, Off she there went. You go. Just, yeah, there um, you go. So, so here's here's something people can do right now w before they even need care. There's there's several professionals that they could get to know now. One of them is an aging life plan professional. You could Google it, aging life wow. plan. If you get to know this person now, and that person gets to know you, you could begin the process of planning far in advance. And, and so when you can't make up your mind or can't, don't have the capacity to do it, she already knows you or he already knows you. So that's one person. Another thing we can do is hire it, what we know is an independent patient advocate. Now, I'm oh, not I a, love that. Yeah. yeah, no, I wish they didn't have the word patient in the name because yeah. we don't have to be sick to have an advocate. I want somebody to come to my house when I need a light bulb changed, and I don't trust the person who's, who's coming in. So if I have somebody with me that I've known for five years, even if I have to put them on retainer, I can sit back and, and, and say, I got peace of mind with hiring people that are going to be alongside me throughout this process. But That's there's it. one more, yeah, but there's one more piece to the puzzle, and this is really important. Yeah. The question we have to ask these people is, 
what am I going to do if I get to know you and you decide to quit your job? Well, that's my biggest okay, but, concern. All right. So they have to answer that question before you hire them. Do they have a team of people behind them? Most of them uh... do. So then you say, all right, you and I will create a little pact, but I want to meet everybody else. And you're looking for people who are way younger than the person that you're dealing with so that you can see that you've got a team of people behind you. Yeah. Diane, this doesn't exist. We're, we're going to be pushing the envelope. We're going to be making companies better because of what we're asking for. And, and, Joy, the real truth is, and I say this on almost every episode, in one form or another, follow the money and now that we are the majority of america and we, i am seeing all of these um possibilities pop up so i'm going to talk very quickly about where my brain goes so i'm sitting at a table with a group of women who are all friends and one of them has a husband who has gotten some kind of terrible condition. She's trying to take care of him at home. She's got a little aid coming in and out, but only a couple of days a week. She's about to have a nervous breakdown. She's mm -hmm. just not qualified. They obviously, they live on Park Avenue. They have money. So she goes on a tour in Manhattan. One of the facilities is in Hudson Yards, which is right on the Hudson River. Beautiful water views. Hmm. Okay, so uh, would you like a one bedroom? Well, that's not a problem. For $20,000 a month, you can get, and let me tell you what, fantastic looking, top of the line. Uh, the, I can't even tell you it would be a five-star resort if it wasn't what it was. Independent living, d dependent living where you need some help every day. Memory care, pleasant way of saying Alzheimer's. So at $28,000 a month before city taxes, which are 10%, you can get a studio. Mm. and 24-7 supervision and care if you have a loved one who has Alzheimer's. I, and I told that story earlier that my friend, and of course nobody wants to admit that their loved one is on a road where there is no return, but Father's Day took her husband with the children who are now 50 and 60 years old out he excused himself to go to the men's room and then walked out the front door of the restaurant because he had no idea where he was or what he was doing there. And they spent the next seven hours looking for him on the streets of New York. So she realizes at a certain point, game over. This has mm -hmm. to be a new game, a new team. Right. Um, if you are very wealthy, you can put your loved one into a gorgeous, comfortable, cashmere, uh, pillowed environment where he, he or she cannot get out, but they sort of have everything in front of them and someone there every minute of the day to service their needs. And da 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 24 hour a day gourmet kitchen with gourmet chefs, a huge menu, but if you are not in the mood for anything on the menu, voila, mm -hmm. just ask for what you want. You can get room service. You can go to a gorgeous appointed dining room. You can go to their games and movie room and eat it there. Whatever you want, 24 hours a day, plus medical staff on hand, your own personal nurses on hand. I'm not done yet. How about a chauffeured limousine to bring your family to you, to visit you? Oh my God, unbelievable. <laughs> you this are just, is too you much. Are, you're describing that money takes care of a lot of problems, but who's got that kind of money? So I'm gonna tell you about a really cool concept 
that is new and upcoming that I think you and your wealthy friend may <laughs> look, you might just love what I'm about to tell you. I'm dying. Tell me. All right. It is now possible to buy your own small home assisted living place where you and your friends can can work with this company to buy your own. So what does that mean? It's a small Is that Toll home. Brothers? Is that the Toll Brothers? It, there could be one of their models. The particular yeah. company that I'm very familiar with is in Phoenix, is in Scottsdale, Arizona. You could call them up and say, I want to buy one of your franchises. So now what do you do? So, say you get five of your favorite friends. You buy this small home, and they, they help you staff it to any custom level that you want. Oh now, this is what people are doing. Why should we give some company we don't know twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a month when we could have create our own environment and have professionals staff it and teach us how to run it. You hire somebody to run it, and you and your friends are there with, with or without care to, to, you know, it depends on what our needs are. But now you have everything you need at less the price, and people are purchasing by the month. Like, let's say somebody moves out for one reason or another. Well, you just have somebody else come in. They're now beginning to pay monthly fees they don't have to be exorbitant it just depends covering the cost and now you have just bought an assisted living franchise your own that's home. right that's personalized and customized i mean i love because i love the customization i was in the lobby of uh one of these high-end care facilities in new york city and even the doorman knew everything. Oh, my God. He knew when the nurses came on and off duty. He knew who they were. He knew this. He knew that. It was so incredible. So the choice is you buy and take responsibility for yourself or you go into an exorbitant situation, if you could afford it, where you would have everything done for you and you'd be able to supposedly customize it but the point is and what we're getting to is whether you shop walmart or neiman marcus you are going to see an expanding business of choices upon choices upon choices which really and truthfully it gives me a lot of comfort. I like right. living alone. I would not like to have a roommate, and I sure as hell would not like to have a stranger off an uh, app mm-hmm. ad as a roommate. On the other hand, for $27,000 a month, if I've got a problem with my knee and my whole upper story is master bedroom, den and, and game room, my office, my outdoor garden, and I don't want to miss out on that. So I'm thinking to myself this morning, and these are crazy woman thoughts, for $27,000 a month, four months of that, I actually priced a small personal elevator that could hold two people, $100,000. So I'm thinking, what wouldn't that be the better investment? And those are crazy thoughts like... What? You're saying about putting an elevator in your apartment, but you know, if you're thinking in your home, you live on two stories, Mm -hmm. and you're not going to be able to access that other story in a year or two years, and you don't want to sell your place, I love my home passionately, then you've got to start thinking of all these crazy solutions based on what is now this huge elastic growing choice of how you want to spend how you can afford to spend 
that most to me precious episode of your life, which is from 65, 70 onward. Right, right. This is, um, this is where the friends come in. Uh-huh. Like we, so, so for people who have limited income, now I live in the city of Chicago and I am surrounded by people of all different kinds of, of financial uh, stability. But the people that I see who are the most happy are the ones who have a strong network of friendships and that they do stay home and their friends come in and out. I live in an apartment building where we take care of each other. And if there is a need to need to get care, then they go to the hospital or they go to rehab and then they come back home. And friends take care of friends. We're, we're healthy and we're not healthy at different times, but we have younger friends. So, we, so for, for example, I walk the dogs of the younger people who are going Aww. to live because, because they do stuff for me when I need help. So we have this give and take, give and take all day long. And that's, that's how we supplement being able to afford little, you know, just different levels of care. Wow. You're so lucky in my building in New York City. Nobody People barely to speak to one another, but the truth, but, but yeah. with a sense on my part of self-awareness. So I'm thinking to myself, mm. I'm single, I'm older, mm. I need some help, I've got a bad knee. I make sure that the doormen yeah. are always taken care of and once again follow the money and they therefore always take care of of me Mm -hmm. worry about me where were you are you okay let me get this Mm -hmm. for you so you you build that care structure into you but i'll tell you what i never thought in a million years i would be making choices like Mm -hmm. do i want to live in a facility for 25k a month and have all the medical there, have doctors on staff 24-7, nurses 24-7, physical therapists 24-7. I love the whole idea, too, of customizing your meals. And my friend that went there for her husband, who has a degenerative nerve disease, it's not going to get better. And she can't do it anymore physically. Mm-hmm. She just can't. Um, she said they picked her up from her home in a gorgeous chauffeured black stretch limo beautiful elegant perfect clean polite took her to see their location took her around everywhere and when she got back in the limo to go home there was a gift basket with a bottle of don perignon that must have been 300 bucks Mm-hmm. And a kind of candy, I'm sorry, I could not remember the name of it, but it's a chocolatier from Paris. And they've only got one store in America on Madison Avenue in New York. And the stuff is just delicious. I would hoover a pound of that in a minute. And so they had already set her up like mm-hmm. a sales organization. Yeah. Like now the next step was, okay, lady, cough it up. How much money have you got and what do you want what do you want to get for it? Yeah. You know, on one hand, Joy, it's very disconcerting mm-hmm. to think of how unfair, it, you know, oh. we all think aging is unfair just to begin with, like, what do you mean I put on 30 pounds and it's all around my waist and my middle? What do you mean I have a bad knee and I have a limp? How dare you? And I'm only close to 80. This shouldn't be happening. And you think of the unfairness that you think in on those terms, like, well, why can't you just go on forever? And then on the other end of it, you've got, well, comfort can go on forever as long as you can afford it. So it seems to me the big trick in our society, as more and more people 
join us on that <laughs> elder care train is how do you do it within your means and how do you do it artistically, mm -hmm. um, realistically, and at the same time getting a lot of what you want. Everybody's view of comfort and what they truly need is yeah. different, but bottom line is I hope there is a way at some point that the government will recognize this. No, don't go there. Step, yeah, well, and don't go don't there. Forget it. Don't yeah. go there. It Thank won't you. happen. Thank okay, you. I, I'll just, save you a lot of time. Yeah, don't, it just took me. Not going to happen. It just took me over three years to get Medi Medicare. Three years hiring lawyers to it. Mm -hmm. because there had been a mess up while I was in cancer treatment that was just so simple change of address for sending literature to me and, and uh, bills to me and it never got figured out it took three mm -hmm. years so I think unfortunately although we have a president who's 80 and a staff around him and pardon me old white guys who are all up there and in Congress too, we are the forgotten people. I mean, right. she, I worked all my life. Come on, somebody help me out here. Someone yeah. give me a little more than nothing. But yet I, I think I always feel like you're on your own, which is kind of scary you are. to a certain age. You are. No, you really are. And if you depend on anything for anybody, I mean, in terms of a, a policy or a program, that's fantasy thinking. So I'm wow. really glad you brought that up because, wow. because the aging of America and the world is bankrupting so many programs. Yes. So just, so just like, don't, just don't even think that there's going to be anything. Don't there. go there. Yeah. No, don't go no, there. Yeah. no, but you continue to bring up the importance. I, I do want to say old age is not all about needing care. We're going to need socializing. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> we, yes. we, we've, we've got it. Like how many old friends, and I mean, I have friends who are a hundred and over. Yes. They, they don't feel good when they wake up in the morning and yet they are out and about. They're doing things because they have figured out a social life and a spiritual life and an intellectual life and a purposeful life. So Oh, all this aging stuff in the care, we don't need 24-hour care. We need 24-hour quality of life. Yes. That's what we have to plan for. So, so once true. we get the care thing figured out, now what? Where are our friends? Where are our pets? Where am I going to go for dinner? All that cool stuff. You, you know, know it's, it's the holistic <laughs> end of it. And that was yes. interesting because for this high-end living, Part of their entire wrap is, and I can't find it amongst all these papers, um, is that they they give you this holistic wrap. Like, do you have yoga friends? We'll do yes. yoga with you. Do you have gourmet cooking friends? We'll do gourmet cooking. Are you a movie buff? We've got a yes. library of 300,000 movies. What, whatever feeds your brain, your soul, and right. your heart as well yes. as your body yeah. is where where that higher end is and it, figuring itself out yes and it becomes more difficult the more you live alone in your little house all isolated because because if nobody's coming to visit you or you can't get out because it snowed that day and you're just dying to get out of the house it becomes very very difficult and so this aging in place we might do okay and put the elevator up there, no, no problem. But at some <laughs> point, we gotta, we gotta find community. Oh, we, we, you know what? Yeah. What terrifies me the most, and we're gonna what? have to wrap this up in a couple of minutes. You and I no. can talk forever. Um, is the the opportunity to connect as yeah. we are right now? There was exactly. there was a very deliberate reason why I went from being on television, teleretailing, HSN QVC, to doing podcasts, my own, and other people's, and videos. Because I felt, while I was in rehabilitation for my leg, for sure, this was a point 
of connection. So honestly, yeah. you may be out there as scared of innovation in technology as I am. I'm always sure I'm going to be left totally behind. But the real mm -hmm. truth is it's technology that's going to save our minds our, our hearts and help keep us young. So okay, but in, don't forget, don't forget the telephone. People forget the telephone. I so, like texting better. I'm sorry. I'm just but a but but you know girl. what it feels like when someone calls you that you haven't talked to. So people who aren't really good on the phone on texting and their phones and and computer. They still call each other, and they feel so good that they have at least connected. So I always say, and don't forget the telephone. Just okay, Joy. For you, we're gonna say, don't forget the forget telephone. Forget the telephone. For, for me, for, I, I had got somebody, it. I had someone who I worked with for almost twenty years. Text me yesterday, and it felt as good as a phone call. Good. And we got it all said. The truth is, yeah, that. The one thing I would leave with is, and, and ask you, because we do have to run. Hmm. When I got a view of what aging was like during COVID and all those mm -hmm. horrible views on the news of what it would be like to be just dropped yeah. into almost warehousing of old people and being ignored and having the whole staff quit because of COVID and you're mm -hmm. starving and no one's taking care of you. I thought, oh, no, no. So give us a few words of hope and advice. And yeah, that's exactly what COVID did for all of us. It gave us ah. a preview. That is the purpose of it. So, so you ask yourself, how did I manage? What did I do to take care of myself during that time? And then go from there. That's your, that's your litmus test. What did I do? Did I go eat a box of chocolate? Or did I go reach out through Zoom or some other way to connect? Did I pick up the phone? Did I take a walk in the park? Did I, did I uh, meet other dog owners walking around? So look at COVID as the wake-up call to yeah. what we did do. And here we are. You, you thought of a podcast. I've been, I wrote another book. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and you know what? That is all food for the soul. Yes. Honestly, and yeah. I I would end this by saying something that I think you would agree with me on, which is always remain a dreamer. Mm. You are yeah. never too old to dream, and you know yeah. what? Your dreams are dream big. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Just dream big. You're not yeah. going to get hurt for that. You're not going to get blasted down for that. You know, I, I'm just going to end with this, which is such good news. So um, I have wanted to be an influencer on social media for a long time. I'm the least technical person in the world. I, I'm techno moronic, honestly. But mm -hmm. I thought, okay, I got communication skills. I'm older. I think this is going to be a niche slot for many women my age who feel they don't have a voice. And wow. I just officially became, I got my notice. I'm officially an influencer on YouTube and, and Instagram. It's like a dream come true for me. So I knew a million people when I said I was leaving TV said, oh, why would you do that? You're number one. You know what? It didn't, didn't feed my soul anymore. Yeah. I, and so ask yourself this question, audience. What does it take to make you happy? How can you manifest that? Because you can dream big, dream small, but always know you've got the power to make it happen. It's I'm going to start my third book. I, I love writing. And that's a great thing to do when you're older. Oh, my God. Uh, okay, my producer is saying, if you don't end this now, I'm going to come to your home and ring your neck. Oh, no. So, no. Oh, no. So, Joy, it could, it could be more fun. And if it gets yeah. to a point of single white female, I need a roommate, I'm choosing you. 
<laughs> okay, you got it. New York, you'll love it here. <laughs> I know, I know, I love New York. Thank you so uh, much. Great conversation. Pleasure. Yay, yay, yay. Joy LaVerde. Oh my goodness, bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to Too Young to Be Old podcast. The episode may be over, but the fun doesn't have to stop here. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at The Diane Gilman, or visit our website, thedianegilman.com. If you like the show, leave us a rating or a review, and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And until then, don't forget... Age is just a number. Together, we'll prove that we are all too young to be old.